Hey guys, welcome back to the second iOS game tutorial. And uh, right now what we're going to do is, since we already have uh, the background scrolling and everything, I think the next step would be to add uh, a ground layer here and our little animated player. So we'll have our, I made it a plane, so we're going to have our plane and we're going to be able to make it fly by the end of this episode. So first, I actually want to slow this down. It's going kind of fast. So we'll go back to move BG SK action and we'll change it back to 0.1 because I changed it to 0 0.01 to kind of show the differences in uh, speed when you change the duration. First thing we're going to do is we're going to add a SK sprite node. Pl whoops, player plane. And then what this is going to do is this is going to be the node that holds our sprite which has this image. Not very good, but it'll do. And I also imported this ground image because we'll be using this later on too. So if we go back, I'm going to add a little code right here that will deal with the physics. So just wait a sec and I'll type it in. All right guys, so I just added this and as you can see, it's in between implementation outside the brackets and right before init with size. And that's just where I like to put it. It's outside the implementation and not in another method because they're static constants used by the class. And uh, don't worry too much about this. It's just, um, basically it's a big number. And we're just having our, well, it's not exactly a big number, but you can look it up. It's just for physics bodies. Basically, we're gonna have a few different categories, as you can see, plane category, world category, pipe category, score, and sky. And the plane category is going to be our plane. That's going to be it. And you see these right here. These are uh, binary shift operators. So just kind of take this for what it is as if you want to make something with physics, you'll have to look more into this. And I don't want to take too much time to explain it. So we have all these different categories. And we have 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And those are just the different numbers they have. And for right now, they're not going to do much until we give them something to do and I don't even think we're gonna we're not gonna get to all the categories we'll probably only use two or three today and the next thing we have to do is add the ground which is gonna look exactly like this except for the ground um, picture file alright so now I have a ground texture and it uses the texture with image name ground which is right over here and I will have it move the ground sprite, reset the ground sprite, and then move the sprites forever. So it's going to do this, move ground sprite, reset ground sprite, and it's going to repeat that action forever. And you can see there's slight differences, not with the move by x. The move by x has stayed exactly the same, but the duration of the move ground sprite is a little different, and that's because we want the ground sprite to move at a slightly different rate because technically it's closer to the user. And let's see what it looks like. All right, so here we go. We have our background moving and then our foreground moving a little quicker. And so the next thing we need to do is to start adding physics. And you can see these are unused variables right now. So we're gonna need to set some physics rules. All right, so we have self.physicsworld.gravity equals CG vector make zero negative five and that's just going to have gravity pushing down and then we have physics world contact delegate self and that's uh, don't worry about that that's just for the physics it's making sure the delegate is this scene and next we have to add our actual plane sorry I'm not typing out the code as we go I'm just in a bit more of a hurry today but I wanted to show you guys how to get to this next step so I'm just doing it as fast as I can and that's why it's a shorter video. Okay so now that we have our plane our plane variable is right here it's player plane and it is with our pixel plane cruddy image that I made and you can make your own by all means go for it and it might even, it'll probably look better so you might as well give that a shot. What I'm doing with the player plane is first I'm setting its position to 60 comma 400 and that's just kind of the top left of the screen set its Z position to 50 because I want to be in the very front of almost everything and then I give it a physics body so this is SK physics body and there's a few different 
ways you can go with it. There's circles and rectangles. I just did a rectangle, and it's a rectangle that's slightly smaller than the picture. So once we get farther on, you'll see if you kind of tip the loop with your tail of the plane, it won't cause you to crash, but we aren't there yet. And so I made it dynamic because we're able to move it around. It does not allow rotation. These are kind of just things that you do with any physics body. And this right here, category bit mask, collision bit mask, and contact test bit mask. Basically, category bit mask, that's what your physics body category is. And ours is a plane, so it's a plane category. Collision bit mask, this is what it can collide into. And the contact test bit mask, also what it could collide into. And so now we say the player plane, if it collides into these, contact will be made if it like touches anything in, in these. So now that we have that, we add it to the game layer and it's almost ready to go. But as you can see, if we click play right now, all we're going to see is our plane falling to the ground and never coming back. Yeah, there we go. And it's gone. So what we have to do is we have to add uh, if the plane hits any of these, we need it to stop where it is or just not go any farther. So that's the next thing we got to do. All right, so I've typed a few things out here, as you can see, uh, SK no dummy and SK no dummy ceiling. And basically, these are, I call them dummies because you don't actually see them, but they're there. They're physics bodies that our plane will hit and it won't be able to pass through. So basically, we're saying, all right, plane, you're not going to be able to go through the ceiling and you're not going to be able to go through the ground. And how we do this is uh, we make the node, we set its position to where we want it to be. As you can see, this one is at negative one because we can let it hit the very bottom, but nothing farther. And then the ceiling is the height. Next, we set the physics body, and basically I made them as far as they can be. This one's uh, self.frame.size.width and then ground texture.size.height times two. And the reason I did the Y as ground texture dot size dot height times two is because it's not going to be able to hit the very bottom. It's going to be able to hit the ground. It's only able to hit the ground texture. So that's why it's that. And then the dummy ceiling physics body is just one. It's just one size. It's only uh, one pixel tall and it's as long as the entire the entire screen. And then these are not dynamic because they are not moving. They're staying where they are and they're not affected by any of the gravity or physics. And then we give it a category bit mask. It's in the world category, and it's not colliding with anything. It's so we don't need any collision bit masks or contact test bit masks. Next, we go to the game layer and we add these. So now, if we click play, it should show our plane running into the ground. Boom! There we go. And you even see a little bounce. That's why I like Sprite Kit. It's actually pretty nice. It kind of it's got good physics. It didn't just hit the ground. It bounced a little and then fell. So now you see. Our next problem is we've got to get this plane to fly when we click. Right now it's just creating all these spaceships. So that's going to be next. What we've got to do is we've got to go into touches began. And what we're going to do is we're going to delete this garbage because this is creating spaceships. And we're going to add two little two little lines. You know, player plane dot physics body dot velocity equals CG vector make zero zero. And what this is going to do is it's going to set our plane's velocity to zero. So whatever it's doing, it's not doing it anymore because when it's falling, it's gaining velocity in the downwards direction. And if we've already tapped a touch, it's going to be gaining velocity in the positive y direction. And we don't want it to have any velocity when we touch. So after we do that, we're going to say whoop player plane dot physics body apply impulse and we could give it whatever you want really it doesn't matter when I say it doesn't matter I don't mean it's not gonna affect anything I'm saying it's really up to you so I wanna apply 0 in the x direction and 14 in the y direction and so what's gonna happen is it's gonna whoops CG vector make All right, so now it's going to apply this vector whenever we touch.
we click, click, and you can see the planes hopping up and down, and we've got somewhat of a game right now. Obviously, it doesn't look that good. The plane's not tilting up and down, depending on where it's going. So we'll change that in the next tutorial, and hopefully we'll get to adding the loops that we're going to fly through. So I'm sorry I did a lot of cutting away and typing the code. I just want to make this as quick as possible for you guys, so where you could still just pause and look at everything that was done, and I don't spend all this time typing things out. Um, hopefully this helps you guys, and thanks for watching.